Well, welcome to this video. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss how we can formulate this fantasy football draft problem as a integer program. Um, if you read the problem description on the left, the draft, the fantasy football problem we're facing is a little bit different than kind of the traditional drafts. Um, in particular, kind of to summarize the changes, is that we're given a set of players. Each player has a cost to us. Each player has a value to us. So, for example, Peyton Manning, if we draft him, we get an expected points per game of 23.0, but it's going to cost us $56 to acquire him. And we have a total budget that we can make the player acquisition. So we have a total budget of $200 we can spend on the players. Um, one thing to point out, we're not really worried about who everyone else is drafting. We're kind of in one of more of the one league, week league type problems where everyone can draft similar players. So we don't need to worry about what everyone else is doing. We want to get the most value out of our team. Uh, there are a couple other constraints that we need to consider. We obviously need a quarterback, um, a one running back, and then we're going to need two wide receivers. And there's a couple things down below that we don't want to draft more than one player from a team. So what we're going to do is we're going to model this problem using binary variables. Binary variables are great for modeling on-off decisions. Binary variables are either equal to zero or they equal to one. Zero typically means that binary variable or that decision is off. The binary variable equal to one means that the decision is on. So we need to think about in this fantasy football draft problem is what are our on-off decisions? So if we start thinking about it, we're making an on-off decision for each player. Peyton Manning is either on our team or he's off our team. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to define binary variables for each player that represent the decision of whether or not we select them for our team. So over here, we'll discuss and kind of do our variable definition. So we'll have variable x, i, j. That's going to equal, is there going to be a binary variable that is equal to 1 if player with initials ij is selected. So that's why if you look at kind of the, the table giving us all the characteristics of the different players we can draft, um, we're given the initials as well. So for example, xpm is the binary variable that represents um, whether or not we select Peyton Manning for our team. So selected for our team. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what our objective function is. We obviously want to try and win the games we're playing each week in our fantasy football league. So we want the highest value of points per game possible across our players. So we need to figure out, based on our binary variables, what's the value that I'm getting for my team. So we're going to maximize, we're in a maximization setting, we want to maximize total points per game for our team. Mathematically, what we're doing is we're maximizing a function of the binary decision variables. So for example, if I put a 23.0 in front of XPM, that term gives me the amount of points the decision on Peyton Manning is giving me. If XPM is 1, I get 23 points because Peyton Manning's on my team. If XPM is 0, then 23 times a 0 is 0. I get 0 points from not having Peyton Manning on my team. So it's pretty simple kind of from here on out. Each player, we're going to multiply their points per game by their binary decision variable of whether or not we've selected them. So we'll have a, for Aaron Rodgers, we'll have a 21.7 of XAR. For Drew Brees, we'll have a 20.6 of XDB. And then for Matthew Stafford, we'll have a 17.8 of XMS. And I could continue typing these out, but I've already kind of done that, so I'm just going to copy and paste the remaining values of these, the remaining objective functions. So I have a 15.2 for 
in front of the decision of whether or not we draft Jamal, Jamal Char Charles with 15.1 in front of LaShawn McCoy, 14.7 in front of Matt Forte, etc. So all we're basically doing is taking the points per game and then multiplying that by the X initials variables to represent the basically the value of selecting or not selecting that particular player. So we have our objective. I mean, basically now our objective gives us the total points per game that we've selected across the players that we've selected. We now need to start focusing on our constraints. So we'll now focus on our constraints. Now we have a couple practical constraints. One thing is we have a budget of $200. The total cost of the players we draft cannot exceed $200. So similar to the objective function, we're going to write something very similar in uh, basically substituting instead of having points per game in front of the decision variable associated with the player, we're going to have the player's cost in front of them. So we'll have, for example, a 56 X PM as our first term in there. That represents the amount of money I've spent on Peyton Manning. If I chose Peyton Manning to be on my team, XPM is one, so that means I'm paying the $56. If I don't choose Peyton Manning, XPM is zero, that means I zero times 56 ends up costing me zero. So again, rather than writing these all out, spelling these all out individually, I'll copy and paste them across the constraints. So again, I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen decision variables in here, one for each player. And then the right hand side of this constraint is the total. This the left hand side gives me the total amount I've spent on my team. The right hand side gives me the total amount I'm allowed to spend on my team. So just so that we can label this, we're going to label this the budget constraint. And maybe to be more descriptive, it's actually the draft budget constraint. We now have constraints that basically require us to fill out our roster properly. If you look at the description, we need one quarterback, one running back, and two wide receivers. So what we need to do is we need to express the number of quarterbacks that we've selected as a function of the decision variables. So basically XPM gives me whether or not I selected Peyton Manning. If I add that to XAR, whether or not I selected Aaron Rodgers, add that to XDB, whether or not I selected Drew Brees, and then add that to XMS, whether or not I selected Matthew Stafford, this term here gives me the number of quarterbacks I've selected. Right? Because each, uh, each term is 0 or 1. If it's a 1, that means I selected that player. So if two of these variables are equal to 1, that means the sum will be 2, means that I selected two quarterbacks, which will, we will not allow. So this sum, we need exactly one quarterback. So if I sum up the total number of quarterbacks I've selected, that needs to be exactly 1. So in this case, this is the QB um, QB position constraint. And then I'm going to need to do the same thing for the running backs. I need to determine what's a mathematical expression for the number of running backs I've selected. Well, I'm going to add up the binary decision variables for each of the four running backs. So XJC gives me whether or not I selected Jamal Charles, Charles. XLM, whether or not I selected Sean McCoy. XMF, whether or not I selected Matt Forte. And then X, ML, whether or not I've selected Marshawn Lynch. And the sum of these has to, since we only want one running back, has to equal one. So this is our running back position constraint. And then we need to do the same thing for our wide receivers. So if I look at XCJ plus XDT plus XAG plus XBM plus XJJ, plus XJN, that gives me the total number of receivers I've selected. Again, each decision variable gives me the on-off decision associated with that player. So if I sum up the decision, vari 
the binary variables across wide receivers, that gives me the number of wide receivers selected. And this needs to equal 2. So this is the wide receiver constraint. So we're almost there. The next set of constraints that we need to kind of just model is the fact that we don't want to select multiple players from the same team. Surprisingly, I'm looking at kind of the top players roughly at each position. I'm very surprised there are no New York Jets on there, which is the team that I'm a fan of. So the New York Jets constraint is very easy to model because one can't select anyone. So obviously we won't select more than one Jet, but there are teams with two players in this set or in the selectable options. So if we start looking, Peyton Manning is on Denver Broncos. Um, he throws to Demarius Thomas, who's a wide receiver for the Broncos. So we don't want to select both Peyton Manning and Demarius Thomas. So we need an expression for essentially the number of Broncos we've selected in our for our roster. So if I look at XPM, that gives me whether or not I select Peyton Manning. That needs to, and then add in XDT, that gives me the number of Broncos that I've selected. Now, I don't need to select any Broncos. I can select one Bronco. I don't want to select two Broncos. So if I add these two up, they need to be less than or equal to one. So I don't want them equal to one because that forces me to select one of the Denver Broncos. It may not be beneficial for me to do that. So we're going to label this the Broncos constraint. And then we also have a constraint with Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson, both of them on the Green Bay Packers. So we have an X. A XAR plus XJN is less than or equal to 1. So this is the Packers constraint. Only one Packer can be selected for our team. We also have Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson, who's, who are another QB wide receiver pair. So we have XMS plus XCJ is less than or equal to 1. We'll call that the Lions constraint. And then finally... Um, that kind of rules out all their quarterback wide receivers combination, but there is a running back and a wide receiver from the Chicago Bears, Matt Forte and Brandon Marshall. So XMF plus XBM has to be less than or equal to one, and that's our Bears constraint. And then the last thing we need to just signify is that for any XIJ, there is a binary variable. So for all the 14 variables we have, they all need to, or for all the 14 variable, for 14 players we have, each decision variable associated with them will be binary. That kind of sets up our fantasy football draft problem. Um, so that's all we have for this video. I'll see you next time.